Welcome back. And when we last left off, uh, Jeff had sprayed um, the epoxy top coat in the mold for the nose. And here you can see uh, he's um, partway through laying up the first uh, layer of, of uh, carbon fiber in there, structural carbon fiber. And so after that, the core goes in. So you'll see that shortly. And here's our side window trimming fixture after it got another light sanding after it was initially primed. And so the red remaining there is the um, is the guide coat that we just spray on there so we know when we got things nice and smooth. And there's the one for the front window glass, same thing. So that's uh, getting close to being ready to be able to use. And here's the nose with the core pieces laid in there. We use um, half inch, what's called a scrim core. It's kind of uh, uh, scored on one side. It has a sort of um, fabric backing that so it can mold around corners. And here it is uh, with the peel ply laid down and the usual uh, vacuum bagging um, breather fabric and such. And so the process on this one was similar to how we did the core for the, or the, sorry, lower part of the fuselage where we do it in two stages. So get the core in there first, uh, get that all bagged and sealed and then come back and lay the inner layer. So here's the uh, rear pressure bulkhead after we finish all the trimming and clean up and cut out the access panel holes. So you can see how that kind of mates up. So in there, that's where we're going to have the uh, header tank for the fuel. And we're also going to have um, the landing gear on left and right there. And the flight control is going to come up through the tunnel there, uh, through the keel, and then go out through into the wings. So that, that uh, is fit, fitting together nicely. And uh, also the main spar will be running through there. Next up, these are the plugs for the uh, door frames that are going to be used to create inserts that will bolt into the roof. And uh, they got um, some more sanding and and uh, got primed again. And we had to actually add a little bit of a, um, a section on there for a flange that we need. But they're getting close, and so it won't be too long we'll be able to lay those up. And then um, the next step will be laying up the uh, the roof part. So And there's the window trimming fixture with a final um, coat of primer on there. And this is the one we saw uh, last time around, the intake, the air intake mold. And so that's been released um, from its plug. That came out nicely. It just needs to be uh, cleaned up and trimmed off. And just as a reminder, there is the plug that it was made on. So it came off cleanly, no problems there, even though it was quite complicated and, uh, and detailed there. Next up, we're back on the roof mold here, like I mentioned last time, and creating uh, what will be a routing mask. So it's just going to be a sort of quarter inch thick um, piece of, of fiberglass that molds over the or fits over the top of the roof and has edges around there that we can run a router around to actually trim uh, where the front window um, is going to be on the on the roof there and also trim out the back windows and also trim off the, the trailing edges uh, where the cowling meets. So that's uh, quite a bit of work to do that. And this is the next day. So Jeff took off all that um, vacuum bagging stuff on the nose and he's laying in the, the inner layer, inner uh, layer of carbon fiber there. And so again, it has to be sort of lined up nicely. So it takes a little bit of time um, just to do this but again laying up these parts is so much faster than creating the molds. <laughs> Here's the guys part way through laying up the routing mask and I think we ended up with the equivalent of about four layers of the heavy uh, fiberglass and the reason is this thing needs to be pretty durable because it's going to be used on every aircraft for trimming out the rear windows and trimming the leading edge of the roof there. And while that was going on, I was uh, bonding in these uh, drill bushings for the mold for the rear pressure bulkhead. And these are ones that are for the gear pivot point and also for the upper gear scissor uh, rotational point. So there was actually four altogether that I put in there. And they're uh, half inch. And you may have noticed that I had the drill bit up the wrong way in there. And that actually the reason for that is because it, um, the bushing doesn't move so much when it's on the other end of the drill bit. And here's the final stage of the nose, again bagged a second time 
and this is with the, the final uh, layers of carbon fiber down and the vacuum down there so no real problems going on with that one and here's our routing mask on the roof uh, finished up so it's not super pretty or anything like that but it's just going to do the job and you'll see later i'll have that on the machine and i'll be cutting out the edges um, that we'll use with the router to follow uh, when we're cutting the actual part so now we're on to friday morning and here is the nose popped out from the mold and uh, looking super nice of course it has the epoxy top coat on there so it kind of looks like it's a finished part um, but you know that will still ultimately on the aircraft will still get sanded and, and proper painting it's not like a gel coat finish that they use on boats that's the finished uh, surface this is just um, you know just like a primed surface basically and so Jeff's there with the recip saw um, just trimming off the edges of the flanges and uh, here's Zach doing a little bit of sanding on those uh, door frames so they're getting closer to being ready to lay up um, the inserts that we're going to create for making the roof with the door frames and here is Mark um, out there with the belt sander and cleaning off the mold uh, pieces for the main spar so we're not too far away from being able to lay up the spar and here is the front window fixture the trimming fixture and um, Jeff is putting in the little D sort of D channel rubber seal there and I'd already put the plumbing in there as you can see here in a second there we've got a little T valve or T connector there and, and a little ball valve there and a connector there will hooks up to our vacuum system the same one that we use for our vacuum bagging um, our molds and here's the side window one so he's working on that one right now getting getting that all put in there and the plumbing on that one's mostly done and unfortunately our ultra suede didn't arrive when it was promised um, but we may do by uh, just using some of our breather fabric because we were anxious to try the system out. So here's Jeff basically laying uh, the oversized glass for the rear window, the left rear window here in place and then um, turning the vacuum on. And it's difficult to see it because my camera went out of focus, but basically it's pulling a, a vacuum on there. And if you imagine 14 pounds um, per square inch of pressure pushing on that, it's um, you can't pull it off of there <laughs> and that was the goal so here it is up on the machine and we've taken the, the protective plastic off and they're actually getting ready to cut it and we've cut this stuff before you may have seen in the past when we just had some flat um, stock that I was experimenting with so I knew how to cut it but I just to be safe there I ran a couple of test cuts that you see in the very end of the glass here on the on the left side and here we are actually going for the cut um, to cut this glass so it's a half inch thick um, this acrylic and we're cutting in a quarter inch um, on the first pass and then it drops down a little further and then comes back the same way so just doing a straight cut on the end for now and then the the other part we do um, in a full pass so yeah, there you can see it's done the, the straight cut and now it's going to go around the other way and, and do the completed rest of the um, of the cut and the reason why I have split it into two cuts like this is because our machine is notorious for wanting to, um, you know, pull out and retract or spin around um, 360 degrees so it can switch axes on the B axis, or sorry, on the A axis. And when it does that, um, it just, the only way it can do it is for me to make it um, pull straight up. And if it does that, it would actually cut a little notch in the glass if it was on the bottom side and so I didn't want that to happen so by splitting up the paths uh, we don't have any problem needing a retraction like that. Anyway you can see it cutting cleanly and we're just blowing some compressed air on there just to get the, um, the, the scraps out there so it doesn't sort of block up and there it is with the outside removed so it came out super nice I mean that's as professional as you can possibly do and the edge is just just as good as you know any sort of factory cut that you can do on there so super happy so decided to just have at it and go and do the front windshield as well so um not really nervous but anyway it's a big part and we don't want to mess it up so again this one i cut this one into four different paths um the two on the upper side here a left one and a right one and again it's sort of down um, a quarter inch deep and then back for the second quarter inch and then 
um, the other side and then down around the bottom and down around the other corner. So I think it took us um, probably 25 minutes to cut the window out there, not too bad. Um, and we're running at, you know, what is, feels like a, a pretty good uh, feed rate on the machine there and the spindle running at 10,000 RPM. And uh, it cuts super clean and it doesn't feel or it doesn't seem like it's sort of struggling at all or anything like that. It's not getting too hot, so pretty happy with it. And we're just using this quarter inch acrylic bit that has uh, two flutes in it and it's uh, super sharp, so it just does the job. And so there you can see coming around the top corner, that would be the uh, left hand top corner of the uh, windshield and uh, no problems at all there. Now we're a little bit further along, we're down on the bottom uh, right hand side of the glass there and you see it's just running about again a quarter an inch oversized from the actual fi fixture that we created and uh, that vacuum is holding super strong on there, we don't have any worries about that moving um, on the machine. So here we are again a little bit more of a close up, um, we've gone and, and moved the um, fuselage into the jig that we created a while back. So we've taken it out of the mold that it was sitting in and um, put it in the jig. And there you can see with the nose on. So there's the opening there for the front uh, access panel. And you can see in there, there's quite a bit of room in there, but we still have to cut out um, the gear hole there. And there's you know, still a bunch of work, but everything's fitting together really nicely. So we're super happy with that. And here's a view from a different angle here, sort of close to the floor. And so now you can kind of really see um, the lower half of the fuselage again with the epoxy top coat on there and the nose. And not to be outdone, we wanted to put the windshield in place just to see how it's looking. And uh, I don't know about you, but it's been a long time since I started the design on this. And trying to picture it in real life, how it was going to look, um, it's just interesting to see so I really wanted to see what it was going to look like from the inside because this windshield is fairly raked back and it's the camera doesn't really do it justice it looks so cool <laughs> being under that glass and you guys all get to see it one day and lastly we have 479 deposits in now so get your deposit in soon and thanks again for watching